Black Panther. The film opens with a man telling his son the history of their people. Long ago, a meteor containing vibranium crash landed in Africa. Five tribes began to fight over the vibranium until one of the shaman spoke to the panther god Bast and ingested an herb that gave him the power to become the first Black Panther. The man united the tribes to create the nation of Wakanda, leading him to become king. However, the Jabari tribe chose to take refuge in the mountains, distancing themselves from the other tribes. The Wakandans used vibranium to develop highly advanced technology and chose to isolate themselves from the rest of the world by producing a force field that hides the nation from sight. 1992, Oakland, California, two men, Njobu, Sterling K. Brown, and James, Denzel Whitaker, are planning to move weapons across the city. A knock is heard at the door. James opens it to find two Dora Malahe warriors. Njobu recognizes them and reveals himself as a Wakandan. Entering the room with the warriors is King Chaka, a tanned Wakani, Njobu's brother. Chaka asks Njobu to come home after being sent to California as a spy to catch Ulysses Claw, Andy Circus, but Njobu has other plans. Chaka then reveals that James is actually Zuri, another Wakandan spy. They discover that Njobu has stolen vibranium for himself and they will bring him back home to put him on trial for his crimes. Outside on the courtyard, a group of children look up to the sky to see Chaka's ship fly overhead. In the present day, Chala, Chadwick Boseman, is set to become king after Chaka's, now played by John Connie, death. He is flying over Nigeria with Okoya, Dan I. Gurira, Adora Malahe general. The plan is to extract his ex-girlfriend Nakia, Lupita Nyong'o, as she is undercover with mercenaries smuggling women and young men as soldiers. As Black Panther, T'Challa jumps out of the jet and uses Wakandan tech to disable the mercenaries' vans. As the goons step out to confront T'Challa, he fights them all before finding Nakia. She joins T'Challa and Okoya as they return home. The three return to Wakanda and reunite with Chala's mother Ramonda, Angela Bassett, and his younger sister Shuri, Letitia Wright, in preparation for Chala's ceremony to become the new king. All of the tribes gather by a waterfall to witness. Zuri, now played by Forrest Whitaker, gives Chala a drink that removes the power of the Black Panther. With that, nobody from the other tribes chooses to challenge Chala until the Jabari tribe show up and their leader, Mbaku, Winston Duke, steps up to try and take the throne from Chala. The two fight, with Mbaku almost succeeding until Chala gains the upper hand and puts Mbaku in a hold over the falls until he taps out and surrenders, allowing Chala to rightfully claim the throne. After the ceremony, Chala is given another drink to restore his powers before being buried in sand so that he may be taken into the ancestral plane. There, T'Challa sees his father. They embrace as T'Challa breaks down upon seeing him. T'Challa expresses his concerns over becoming king and doing the right thing. Chaka tells his son that while he is a good man, it is hard for a good man to be king. In London, Eric Killmonger Stevens, Michael B. Jordan, is at a museum admiring artifacts from African cultures. He asks the guide about a hammer-like weapon, which she identifies as one thing, but Killmonger corrects her and says it is made of vibranium from Wakanda. The guide then passes out from a something Killmonger slipped into her coffee in order to create a diversion. Medics arrive, but they are really Cloyd and his goons. They kill the guards, and Killmonger steals the weapon before getting away with his crew. Chala walks through downtown Wakanda with Nakia. He asks her to stay home to help him run things around there, but she shows hesitance in continuing to work in Wakanda. Later, Chala is with his best friend Wakabi, Daniel Kaluuya as they check on a wild rhino in a pen. They are then called by Okoya, who is also Wakabi's lover, to the palace. Claw is set to sell the vibranium piece to an American buyer in South Korea that night. Wakabi wants to join Chala in finding Claw, as he murdered Wakabi's parents, but Chala asks that he stay and keep things secure while he goes. Before the mission, Chala meets with Shuri, who has developed a number of impressive technology, including sound absorbent shoes, which she calls dot sneakers, as well as modifications to the Black Panther suit. It is disguised as a necklace, and it absorbs each hit it takes and turns it into kinetic energy. Chala, Nakia, and Okoya go undercover in Busan to a casino, where they try to find Cloy and his buyer. Chala runs into Everett Ross, Martin Freeman, who is also undercover. Claw and his goons show up, and he quickly realizes he is being set up. Okoya is compromised by one of Claw's men, forcing her to fight them. Claw and his men escape and ride through the streets, leading Nakia and Okoya to pursue them. Chala follows in his suit, 
while Shuri rides a car through a projection back home that operates an actual car that Chala rides on. The villains shoot at him, but the hits from the bullets give him the kinetic energy that he redirects to the villains. Claw blasts at Nakia and Okoya, destroying their car, but not killing them. Chala reaches Chloe's car and rips out a tire, causing him to crash. Chala goes to finish Chloe, but Nakia reminds him that people are watching. They take Chloe into custody. Ross interrogates Chloe, while Chala and Okoya listen in through a device Chala planted on Ross. Chloe reveals to Ross what he previously didn't know about Wakanda and all that it contains. Outside, Killmonger and his crew set up explosives behind a wall. Nakia sees this on security cameras and runs to warn everyone, but the villains blow open the wall. They start shooting, and Ross pushes Nakia out of the way, taking a bullet in the back. Killmonger takes Chloe away, and Chala notices a ring around Killmonger's neck similar to one that belonged to his grandfather. Ross is given something to keep him stabilized until they return home. The villains head to a plane that Killmonger wants to take to Wakanda. Claw takes Killmonger's girlfriend as a hostage, since he has other plans, but Killmonger kills the woman himself before shooting Claw. He tells Killmonger they won't let him into Wakanda until he reveals a tattoo on his lip that most Wakandans have. He then shoots Claw dead. Back in Wakanda, Wakabi expresses disappointment with Chala for failing to bring in Claw. At the same time, Ross is being tended to by Shuri, who uses vibranium to heal his wounds. Chala then goes to find Zuri and ask him why Killmonger had his grandfather's ring. Zuri is then forced to admit what he knew about Njobu. In a flashback to 1992, we see that Njobu had stolen the vibranium to spread it to other people of African descent so that they may fight back against their oppressors. Njobu turned his gun on Zuri, and Chaka stepped in and killed Njobu with his claws. It filled Chaka with great regret, and they left his son, Eric, behind. The boy was on the courtyard when this happened, and he later found his father's body. Eric would go on to become a black ops soldier who earned the nickname Killmonger due to his high body count, which is evident by the marks on his body for everyone he's ever killed. Killmonger enters Wakanda with Chloe's corpse. He presents it to Wakabi, who escorts Killmonger to the palace. Killmonger reveals his true name, Njadaka, and that he is Njobu's son. Wakabi confirms it to everyone when he shows them Killmonger's ring. He announces his intention to claim the throne, and he challenges Chala for the spot. Everyone gathers for the challenge by the falls once again. Killmonger fights brutally and almost easily overpowers Chala. Zuri steps in to try and save Chala, knowing it is with him that Killmonger should hold a grudge. Killmonger fatally impales Zuri and takes Chala down before throwing him over the falls, to the horror of Ramonda, Shuri, and Nakia. Thus, Killmonger is made king. Killmonger goes into the ancestral plane and is back in his old apartment, where he sees the moment that he found his father's body. He comes across Njobu's old journals and even speaks to the man himself briefly. After waking up, Killmonger orders everyone to burn a garden of heart-shaped herbs for future kings, but Nakia manages to sneak one away with her. Nakia goes with Ramonda, Shuri, and Ross to the mountains to find the Jabari tribe. They speak to Mbaku and ask for his help. He reveals to the group that they fished Chala out of the river and that he is now in a coma. Ramonda grounds the herb into a drink to give Chala before they bury him in the snow that he rests upon. He goes into the ancestral plane and sees Chaka again, this time condemning his actions in leaving Killmonger behind. Chaka admits that this was the truth he hid from his son and he expresses regret. Chala then wakes up. He requests Mbaku's help in fighting Killmonger, but he refuses. Killmonger now has help from Wakabi and other Wakandan soldiers as he plans to send their weapons across the world to other operatives and mercenaries as his father had planned. As one of their jets flies overhead, it is shot down by Chala, making his return as Black Panther. Wakabi and his army charge against Chala, but he blasts them away with his kinetic energy. Okoya then leads the Dora Malahe into battle. Shuri gives Ross access to a jet to take down the others before they leave Wakanda. Ross is able to shoot them all down. Nakia joins Shuri and Okoya as they fight Killmonger, now in his own suit. Wakabi unleashes armored rhinos into the battle. Suddenly, the Jabari arrive to help the Dora Malahe. One of the rhinos nearly runs down Mbaku until Okoya steps in. She forces Wakabi and his soldiers to surrender. Before Killmonger can hurt Shuri, Chala tackles him, and they fall down into the vibranium mines. They continue their fight until Chala utilizes the tech down there to mess with Killmonger's suit, leaving him exposed so that Chala may impale him with his own short spear. Now vulnerable and dying, 
Killmonger expresses regret over not seeing how beautiful Wakanda really is. Chala carries Killmonger out of the mine to see the sunset, which Njobu had described to him as a sight to behold. Chala offers Killmonger a chance to be healed, but he declines, knowing he would only be imprisoned afterwards. Killmonger requests to be buried at sea with his ancestors, as they knew death was better than bondage. He pulls the spear out of his chest and dies peacefully. Things become calm once again in Wakanda as Chala reclaims his throne. He once again asks Nakia to stay in Wakanda, as he has plans for her to help him. The two of them kiss. Chala brings Shuri to Oakland outside Killmonger's old apartment. Chala reveals he bought the building, as well as two buildings next to it, so that he may establish a Wakandan outreach program that Nakia and Shuri will spearhead. He then brings down their jet, so that the kids in the courtyard may see and be in awe of. One of the boys then approaches Chala and asks him who he is. mid credit scene, Chala is joined by Nakia, Shuri, and Okoya at the United Nations. He announces his plan to bring Wakanda out of hiding in the hope that they may work together with the rest of the world. post credit scene, three Wakandan children are looking upon someone in a hut. Shuri orders them to not bother the person. He steps out of the hut and we see it is Bucky Barnes, Sebastian Stan.